Well, happy Tuesday, everyone. At least I think it's Tuesday. I tend to lose track of the days this time of year. You know how it is, right? So I'm going to do this cookie recipe. Uh, now, a lot of people shy away from this particular recipe because of the intimidation factor. A lot of people are intimidated by anything French. And I'm telling you, don't be scared of this. This will be a lot of fun. On top of that, there are some serious health benefits to making this particular tasty treat. So today, we are making macarons. Yeah, they're French, they sound fancy. Holy smokes. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And it really is just that easy. There are a couple of key things that we have to keep in mind as we're doing this. You have to follow the instructions very closely. Now, down below, I'm going to put the recipe that I use and that I follow. It's very important that you don't eyeball this or eh, kind of, nope, you have to follow this one precisely and that goes against everything I normally do. I'm usually, yeah, that looks good. Add a little bit more of this. Can't do that, you have to be precise with these. So pay attention to the instructions. So the very first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna separate out some freshly washed, clean today's eggs. Get them as fresh as you can. We're gonna separate them. We need three egg whites. So let's get to cracking. Now we are not gonna discard this yolk, and I'll tell you why. I'm gonna make some bread later on, and I'm going to beat up the yolk, right? And I'm gonna put that over the top of my bread before I bake it. It just gives it a really pretty sheen and a little flavor boost, and yeah, I'm gonna do that. So how's everybody getting along on their Christmas shopping and to-do list. We all surviving this okay? I'll tell you what, traffic has been crazy. And you know what I'm noticing? There's a whole lot more shopping going on at dollar stores than I've noticed before. You save money where you can. All right, and this is our third one. Somebody's got a nice, happy shell. Everything looks clean and good. We have happy chickens. You know, this week started the first week that all of the chickens, all of my hens, started laying eggs. It has been crazy since we moved here. It would look like they were going again, and then they stopped. And then they were going, and then stopped. But not once until now that we've lived here have they all each laid an egg a day. So now they're all back to laying an egg a day. That's awesome. And the trick, and I tried every trick in the book to get them to lay their eggs. Um, and there wasn't anything I could do while they were molting. You know, you kind of just have to ride that one out. That's why you always need a few extra chickens, right? If you're trying to convince your significant other that you need more chickens and they're saying, no, you don't need more chickens, yeah, you do. Because when they go into malt, your egg, produ your egg production pretty much stops. All right, so we have our egg whites in there. Oh yeah, I was gonna tell you what I did. So what I did, I knew that I had to increase their protein and probably up their calcium. So the first thing I did, I added um, diatomaceous food grade, diatomaceous earth to their diet, made sure that there were no internal parasites, okay? 
Once I got that done, there was still no improvement in the egg production. They were done molting. Well, now what? What I did, I went and got a bag of chick starter. I think that's usually like 21, 22% protein. And I started feeding that to them straight for the first two weeks. And then I started mixing their regular cracked corn and, you know, crumble in. And three weeks later, they're all back to laying again. Even though it's shorter days and it's cold and we've had some funky weather, yeah, they're all they're all doing great. So there's a little tip for you. All right, so we've got our egg whites into our thingy. I use I use a stand mixer. You can use just a regular hand mixer if you want. You can even do it by hand if you if you go that way. I like to make things easy. So I have a stand mixer. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to beat these until they are foamy. All right, let's get this going. Let me show you what that looks like when I say get it foamy. Okay, see that? It's nice and foamy. Slinging you all around, aren't I? All right, now what we're gonna do is to the egg mixture, we're gonna add one quarter cup granulated sugar. Okay. I would lose my head if it wasn't already attached. I'll tell you what, this year has been particularly particularly chaotic. Okay, so to the to the frothy egg whites. Do, do you love the shirt? Do, they only had it in a 2X, so I'm kind of drowning in it. But, oh man, I'll tell you what. I got Christmas keys on parade. Duh. Joel hates this shirt. I don't know why. It's happy. It's festive. Okay, so to this I'm going to add, I'm adding a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. That's what really makes this. So, as you can guess, a macaron is a meringue. So it's a baked meringue. So the shell of the macaron is a beautiful, light, airy shell, okay? It's just, it's nice and crispy on the outside and it's airy and moist on the inside if you do it right. If you do it right. So let's do it right, shall we? Okay, so, and we're not up to the portion of the program yet where I said the hidden health benefits. Yeah, we're not there, but I tell you, you know what? You're gonna to wanna to buckle in for that. You're gonna to wanna to stick around and watch that because the benefits of making these cookies is tremendous. It'll change your entire attitude. Stick around for that. All right, let's get this whipped up. Okay. We're going to want to, we're gonna to wanna to add, we're gonna to wanna to whip this for about eight to 10 minutes until it is until you can pull, a, pull pull the beater out and it makes a peak and it holds it and doesn't flop so when you're making this right what you want to do think space needle all right there are so many other things that i could use as a comparison but i'm not going to do that what you want to be able to do and I've seen, I've seen bakers do this and it's fine, not really. If you do it right, it's fine. You can take the entire bowl, flip it upside down and hold it over your head and nothing will come out, okay? It has to be that stiff. So let's get to whipping. Okay, it's been about eight and a half minutes. So it's time for us to check this and see if 
we did what we needed to do. Again, we're going for super stiff peaks. Looking good, friends. That is super, super stiff. Yeah. That's what we want. Okay, now. We're not quite to that part of the show that makes this super fun to do. I'm going to get these beaters cleaned off and then I'm going to show you um, what it should look like. Okay. So just hang on, but we're not to, that, not to the hidden health benefits part of this show yet. Yeah, that is absolutely beautiful. See, and it's not hard, it's time, okay? Again, with this recipe, it does have to be precise. I'm gonna mention a couple other things here too. When you're doing this, you start out with absolutely clean and dry everything, okay? Your spatulas, your mixing bowl, your beaters, everything perfectly clean. Lay that over there. Grab a little something, something to wipe my finger off. All right, I'm gonna show you what these look like. I don't need the mixer anymore for this. So I'm gonna tuck it out of the way here. Now, can you see this? Look at that. See, there's no dripping, no nothing. It's just fluffy magic. All right. At this point, you want to keep it nice and airy, right? So be very gentle with it. Now, on to our next step. Um, we're going to, I'm going to use some food gel in mine, food color gel. So I'm using the Americolor, and I've got Super Red. And what I'm looking for, I'm looking for kind of a striation. I don't want to mix it all the way in. You can. If you want solid red, you do you, boo. What I'm going for I use this stuff sparingly. So what I'm going for is kind of a whipped peppermint candy kind of a look. Okay, so let's just see how this turns out. I've never done it before, so you're coming with me as I do it for the first time. So I'm just going to very carefully fold the coloring in, okay? And I'm going for keeping those striations. Okay, so I'm just kind of mixing it in there, right? Now there's some more happy goodness that gets to, that, that needs to be mixed in here. For right now, that's mixed in plenty fine. Now our next step, and this is crucial. This is this this will make or break a macron. What we need to do, we're going to sift our almond flour and powdered sugar. Okay? And it calls for a cup each. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to do a half a cup of each at a time in my sifter. So, again, precise measurements, guys. Use a knife or whatever you have to make sure that your, your, um, your almond flour and your powdered sugar is level, okay? So, half a cup 
of the almond flour. And a level half cup of powdered sugar, otherwise known as confectioner sugar in some parts of the country. And now we're going to sift that. Almond flour tends to get rather lumpy. That's normal. Don't freak about it. It's not like it's coal, okay? So we're just going to sift this. Now, the bigger lumps that are left over after sifting, you can discard them. You can throw them out for the birds. That's what I'm going to do. Or you can munch on them. They make a cute little snack. It's nothing fancy. It's all about being simple, right? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle the way. I want to ride, 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 ride. This is the monotonous part of it. And again, we're not to the health benefits yet. You're going to want to hang for that. Let me go ahead and lower you down so you can see some of this magic. So I want to point out too that my kitchen right now, I waited to do this until I had a temperature inside of 70 and a humidity of under 30%. It makes a difference. For some reason, it, it, it does make a difference. If you have too much humidity, your meringue may not turn out the way you need it to. And it's really kind of a gamble. You never know exactly how these puppies are going to turn out until they're done. There's kind of a science to it. But really it's just air. Air, air, and more air. Alright, we're going to get the rest of this all sifted up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this, gently, bit by bit, bit at a time, and fold it right in. Let me consult my handy dandy magic here. No. Okay. So we're going to add, we're going to add our flour and sugar into our meringue. I like to live on the edge, so I poured the entire stuff, the entire thing, right in there. Two cups. All right. I want to get you down in here so that you can see. Now you're just lifting and folding. Lifting and folding, scraping the sides as you go. Lifting and folding, lifting and folding. I'm probably going to lose my striation. I'm going to see what this looks like as we get closer to it. I've got another backup plan. 
in case it's not the color that I want. No, it's not going to be the color I want, but I've got a fix for it. to fully incorporate those dry ingredients into the meringue. That looks beautiful. full of a little character around here. Now I'm going to leave you set up just like this. <coughs> We're almost to the fun part guys. Now we take our mixture and we put it into our piping bag. And if you'll see how I like to do it I have everything together and I find a tall glass and I put my piping bag down inside of that. So it's standing up and it works out really well. Okay guys. Now we're going to pipe onto our, onto our sheet. So I want you to take a look at this. This is a special sheet that I use for making my prongs. Try to tilt you down here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. This is a Silpat baking mat. Okay. And you'll see that it has all these little circles all over it. That's so that I have the perfect size disc every single time. It's important. Now we're going to take our fabulous meringue and we're going to start loading our sheet. on star tip on here. But that's fine. We're going to roll with it. This might be a happy little accident. We shall see. So, using a large star tip, I am getting the points to the edge of the larger of the two circles on my mat. Okay. Here's another th another fun thing, at least around here for us. Joel absolutely loves it when I make macrons. Because if you screw up a batch, that's okay. They still taste fabulous. Range flour and sugar, and then more sugar. So he gets to eat all the mistakes. Yeah. So we're just gonna cook. We're gonna continue on, and we're gonna load this this sheet pan up. Okay guys, 
Want to know what the hidden health benefit is? I'm fixing to show you. It's going to get a little loud up in here. You have to get the air out of these. Here's what we're going to do. Pan number one. I'm just going to beat the silly snot out of them. Look out your holiday aggressions right here. You don't want any air bubbles. So whack the silly snot out of them. got two trays <laughs> and a little pent-up aggression, shall we? Now what we're going to do we're going to let those sit not in an oven anywhere we're just going to let them sit for about 20 minutes until there's an outer shell that forms on that meringue that's really important you want to be able to when you go back and you touch them you don't want your finger to stick at all Okay, you guys, so it took a little bit longer. It took closer to an hour, actually, in my kitchen because it's higher humidity. So I want to show you. See, you can, you can touch these and they don't even indent and your fingers clean, okay? And that's what you want. You want that skin on there. Now, we are going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees. Excuse me. Okay, we're gonna preheat the oven to 300 degrees. Okay, and we are going to bake these once the oven's preheated. The oven is heated up. We're going to bake these for 20 minutes. Set a timer. Okay? That's important. The, the baking has to be exact. If you don't bake them long enough, they won't have feet. They'll collapse. And they'll just be kind of a... They won't be good. But if you overbake them, well, they look ugly. They crunch like rocks. Set the timer. I'm going to use my happy little chicken timer. Isn't he cute? I love it. And I've never used them. Anyway, when the time is right, I'm going to set my little timer for 20 minutes. And then we'll come back after that. When we're done baking, we're just going to let these cool until they're cooled all the way down and then take them off the mats and we're going to fill them. Okay? Easy peasy. So, come on back in a little bit. Look at this, guys. I just took them out of the oven. Look at the little feet on them. You can see this right here? That's the foot. The feet aren't as tall as I might like them. Yeah. Now, we let them cool completely and then we put our filling in. So, I'll bring you back for that. Okay guys, so now we're gonna make the filling for these tasty little tidbits. So, 
In my stand mixer bowl, I have three quarters of a cup powdered sugar, roughly, okay? I have a quarter cup fresh butter. Um, and we're just gonna mix this up and we're gonna add our liquid. We're gonna get the consistency to just about perfect piping and then I'm going to strand in my coloring. I really want to get that marble look. So let's see what we can do here. Let's hit it, boys. Let's see what happens. Okay, at this point, the butter is pretty much mixed in with the powdered sugar. So I'm going to start to very carefully add my liquid in. I'm going to start with a tablespoon of water. Now this is not going to be a royal icing. Uh, royal icing is just too thin to do what we're doing here. We're making a filling. So it needs to be a little bit thicker consistency. I'm pleased with that. Now I'm going to add some peppermint extract. This is kind of to taste. Now, I'm putting in a full tablespoon because we like it minty. You might not like it that strong, so adjust it however it suits you. And that made it too thin, so we're going to add a little bit more powdered sugar. This is why I always end up with so much more. nothing exact about anything I make, except for the shelves for the macarons. Yeah, run it, we got it. Okay. Now you can, if you're at a pinch and you're really tight for time, you can use that frosting that comes in a tub. Um, you would have to add a little you would have to add a little more powdered sugar to it just to make it a little stiffer. I think if I remember the consistency of that stuff right, it's a little on the thin for macrons. But you can always do that. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so pretty. It smells like Christmas. Okay. Get this out of the way. Now, let me see if I can get this accomplished. So again, I'm using the gel. You can use regular food coloring. I just think this would probably, this would probably go a little, oh good, just scatter it all over the place. I've gone Grinch, y'all. This is what I ended up with. Now let's see if we're skilled enough to transfer that look into a piping bag. Okay guys, come into the home stretch now. Now we're going to take one of our little shells, okay, see? Take the bottom, see how smooth that is? Smooth, smooth and shiny. And we're just going to dollop some of our filling right in the center. We're going to take another one and put it right on top and sandwich it. See how pretty that is?
Dollop in the center. And top. It's that simple. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the rest of these done. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Christmas macrones. I hope you enjoyed this. Now, don't forget, the recipe will be down in the comments. I'll put that in there for you if you'd like to try it yourself. Don't be afraid of French cooking. It's not that scary. It just sounds funny. All right, you guys. Until next time, be good, be blessed, keep looking up, keep that attitude of gratitude, and we'll catch you on the flip. Ho, ho, ho.